In this video, we're going to be talking about the Jira Advanced Roadmaps, aka Plants, Summer View. Let's go talk about how do we actually use this. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this video. And don't forget to check out those links down below as I have links to my merch store, my paid courses, my free courses, and all the other different ways that you can help support this channel. So first of all, you do need to be in a JAR, a Jira Advanced Roadmap. This is a Jira Cloud Premium only feature. If you're not on Jira Premium Cloud, you're not gonna be able to use this. So standard and free need not apply. But enterprise and premium, you're in luck. So there's nothing magical that you need to do. In fact, all you need to do is create the plan and then it automatically is created for you. Most of the time, when you are interacting with the JAR, you're inside this timeline view. But today, we're not gonna be talking about this. We're going to be describing how do we use a summary view. First thing you want to know is that you get to control the dates. So pick the dates that make sense for you. This is going to show you the last two weeks and show the next four weeks. But if you're doing like PI planning, this would be a great place to set up your entire PI, or maybe you want to look at the previous PI. But the first thing you want to do is set these dates. Now you could do relative or you could do fixed to be very explicit on those dates for what you want to see this metadata be for. I'm going to leave the defaults, but again, your mileage is going to vary based on the dates that you pick. Now there's a little bit of information, some homework, if you want to go do read some literature on how these insights are calculated, but let's focus on the insights. So the first thing that you get to see is going to be a list of these four items. Now you don't get to change these items. These are just created by Atlassian for you. And Atlassian has deemed that these are the most important things. So my recommendation would be work around this, right? Knowing that Jira cares about unassigned issues, critical priority, overdue, and blocked, you can now work with that, right? So now you can make sure you're using that due date. Make sure you're using your blocks and blocks by relationship. Make sure you're using your priority field. And most importantly, make sure you're assigning or not assigning tickets based on importance. So essentially, that information that I just described, that gets surfaced. Again, nothing you got to do. It's all happening behind the scenes. All you need to worry about is that you can click on these and it's going to take you to those particular items that are of interest. So that's kind of cool here. So I can click on that for my unassigned stuff. I can go back to my summary view, go look at those 34 critical issues, and it's just going to show it to us right here. So if I expand priority, you're going to see these are those critical items. So very, very helpful shortcuts. This is what my team needs to go hit and address and just take care of immediately because this is where the pain points are going to be, again, according to what Atlassian cares for. Below that, we get to see a lot of different overviews for different things. So first, starting off from the left, we have a status overview. Now this is configurable a little bit. You're gonna see the statuses for a story, or you can do the drop down and do your epics. I just happen to call mine grande, but you can do your epics or you can do your initiatives. This all depends on your hierarchies of how you have your setup. But in most cases, you're gonna have at least epic and stories. I just happen to have a renamed epic called the grande and an initiative. Over to the right hand side, we have issues in progress and again, very similar, not a whole lot of customization, but you're just going to see things that are in progress and the percent completes again, very, very beautiful metrics that are automatically calculated for you. These are going to be for your epics or you can go to your initiatives. Now, no stories on this one, but you can at least do those initiatives or you're there or those epics. Again, I just happen to call mine grande. And then you can do a little filtering on the status category. It's not just going to be like, is it to do in progress or done? Like you, those actual statuses, but rather the categories. So you can see any issues that are in a particular status category. So now as we come down, we get to see a couple more things. We're going to see key dependencies. Now this does depend, no pun intended, on you having that blocks and blocks by relationship, which is really easy to do because in the timeline view, all you got to do is link these issues together. You just go from, you just grab an, the little plus sign, you drag it to another issue and you've established that dependency. And now it's going to be visible over here on the keys dependencies. Now this is going to show you key dependencies, right? This is Jira again, analyzing and looking at your data and going, these are the most critical things you got to go take care of as a team, but you can click on this view all dependencies and see everything. Now your dependencies, you're going to be able to see all statuses or again, pick from those categories. Now, if you're using the teams, I'm not, I don't always use teams. They're not always the best. I, at last time has burned me a couple times, but if you're using the teams, you also do get to see this team progress. So as you have different teams, you get to see for that period of time, right? That period of performance, how are we doing? Where are their epics at or where are the initiatives at 
with respect to that team. And again, you can see all the issues grouped by teams if that's something you want to see. But this is going to basically surface critical information for you. So at this point, our team is not doing too well. We're 0% complete. And then finally, again, if you're also using that team functionality, which again, I don't normally use, but if you are, you also have a capacity view. So if you want to do resource allocation or capacity planning, this is going to be the best way to do it. You can toggle between your different teams and then you can see information as to how many points are available to them and how many they've consumed and whatnot. So again, I don't use it, so it's, you're not going to get the best view here, but you can kind of get a feel for the kind of data that you do get to see. And that's it. Like, there's not much other thing that you can do because these are pre can right? Atlassian has determined that these exist and how they work, and you can't swap out things for something that you care about. And so you do got to work your business around the things that it does show you, and hopefully everything else will fall into place. But anyways, that's it for this video. If you did enjoy it, please make sure you smash that subscribe button, smash that like button, and most importantly, there's links down below. Check them all out. We got some really cool merch. We have some paid courses, some free courses. I have one-on-one -on -one memberships. I have just donations. Whatever you want, whatever you're looking for, I probably have a resource for you. So everything is in that link tree down below. So go check it out, and I'll see you in the next one.